there, it's Erin with Time Saving Templates. And in this video, I'm gonna be going over how to calculate turnover and specifically how headcount plays a role in the turnover formula and some common questions we've been getting about reviewing your headcount numbers. So I'll be using a turnover template that we have at timesavingtemplates.com in the human resources section. I have a few other, a couple other videos that go over how to use this turnover template. So if you run into questions or you're not sure where to start with turnover, you may want to go back to those first videos. I'll link to them. But just so you know, it's basically there are several different turnover charts and different turnover summaries that look at turnover by department, turnover by uh, years of experience, your total headcount, and uh, the turnover percentage term reason, and also summaries by department. All of these summaries populate after you paste in your different reports. So to calculate turnover, you're going to need your headcount, your active employee list for beginning and ending of the time period. It could be monthly, it could be annual. And then you're also going to need your total terminations, voluntary, involuntary. And then also to help with calculating the headcount numbers, you're going to need new hire reports and transfer reports. So these are all different tabs or pages you would paste your reports into if you're using this template. If you're calculating your own turnover, then you probably have an idea that you're already pulling this information. Also, the way I have it set up is if you scroll right, the main information is in the beginning for your reporting, but if you scroll right, I have this other section that is just to help you double check things. And I even have a note here that says, you know, you can hide this when you're done, but you'll see that we have something red right here that says double check. So these formulas are already built in to update after you paste in your information. But the reason that we're getting a double check right here is because there are a few different ways to calculate your ending headcount. And so this turnover percentage is calculated based on total terms divided by the average of beginning and ending headcount. So that's the reason that we want to get ending headcount accurate. And that's why this is saying double check right here. So if we look at the current employee list, it's telling us that we have five employees here that are in West. Uh, but when you're looking at turnover, everyone should be accounted for, whether they're hired, terminated, or maybe they transferred from North to West. That's why you want to include transfers because of this ending headcount number. So if we look at, it should match up beginning headcount. So West started with a headcount of three, then we add three hires, so that's six headcount and no terminations. So what's the problem? It's still a 0% turnover, but the reason it says double check is because our current list is saying we have five headcount. So what happened to that one person? Was somebody terminated and we're not picking it up and they they do have a turnover percent? So that's where we have the issue. One. If we calculate it one way, we're saying the ending headcount is six. Or if we're looking at the employee list, the ending headcount is five. And then same with this one. We're saying ending headcount is six as of the employee list. But if I try to calculate it, this is for East, then it's not, it's coming out to eight. So this one is also saying no terms, but we had started with four and hired four. So how do we know what really happened? We just have to go back and double check things. So I thought it would help to review what could be happening in this chart before you go troubleshooting in your different reports when you have that discrepancy in the headcount, num ending headcount number. There's a few things that could be happening to cause that. And I'm just put for reference, the turnover formula is up here, total terms divided by beginning headcount plus ending headcount divided by two. So the average of the end of the headcount for that month. And for this example, we're looking at January turnover. We pulled the previous employee list January 1st. Ending headcount would be the current employee list as of January 31st. 
Those are lists of everybody who was active as of that date. And then also termination and new hire reports that have an effective date during January. So sounds straightforward so far. So what happens to cause some differences in these reports is if, you know, on the left or the right, we have terminations, new hires or transfers that could be entered ahead of time or they could be entered retro and backdated. That's what's gonna throw some of the numbers off. So for this example, we could have January terminations that are entered in December. Usually that's okay because you're pulling all the January reports in end of January, beginning of February. Then you could also have February terminations that are entered in January. And this could apply to either terminations, new hires, or transfers. Was there something that was entered in February and is applying to January? In this case, if it is a February termination, we don't count that as a termination for January turnover. If February's terms are entered ahead of time, they're entered in January, are they accidentally being included in your termination report because they're entered in January, but they're actually not effective until February. They're still gonna appear as active in the employee list. So you wanna make sure you don't have February, the following month's terminations in your term report. So those are two things to look at and double check. Things that are entered ahead of time, are they appearing in the right month in the right report that you're pulling? And that can, help to just double check you're pulling the terminations or new hires or transfers based on their effective date and not based on date entered in the system. The second thing that happens is when these changes are entered retro or backdated. So we could have December terminations entered in January. Well, what if you already did January's turnover? That's something to think about how you want to handle those backdated situations. Maybe you do want them included in January. If they you've already finished December's turnover, you want to count them somewhere. So if you have a December termination that's entered in January, chances are as of January 1st, they're going to appear as active on that employee list. And then it's entered sometime in January, so they're not going to appear on the current employee list. But if you're not including that termination in your term report, that could cause another difference in, in the situation. So that's the second bullet. January terminations entered in February. Just double check. Do you have January terms that were entered in February? They're going to appear active as of January 1st and January 31st. If you don't actually terminate them until February or something, are they appearing active in the employee list? If so, take them out of the active list or the current list if they're not technically active as of January 31st. These are just different ways. It just depends on how accurate you want to get your reporting. But if it's just off by a few and you're okay with that, or if you want to spend time researching these situations to get it as close to accurate as possible. If you're looking at turnover by department or by leader, if you have somebody transferring departments or they're transferring out, you don't want that to count against that department as a turnover because they're staying with the company. So hopefully that helps give you like an overview of how the counts could be different between the different reports and where to start troubleshooting is just checking, do you have any of the terms, hires, or transfers that are on those borderline dates where they're entered way ahead of time or they're entered you know, in retro to a previous month. With this one, it's kind of easy because I know what I did for the example. I know why. But when you're going through it, it's it does take some researching. What happened here is there are some new hires here that were hired. Uh, these three were hired January 30th. And these new hires are not in the current employee list. So this could have happened if we pulled that current employee list 
say I pulled it January 29th, we're close to the end of the month, so I just pulled it on the 29th, then I don't have the hire date in here, or somebody's hire date could be entered ahead of time. This one, you'll see if I sort it on date of hire, that's probably what I would recommend, and you can sort if it won't let you sort the gray columns, that's okay. It'll those are just formulas, so they'll they'll follow the sorting. But if you sort on date of hire, then I can see that the most recent date of hire is January 15th. But if I sort by date of hire in here, my most recent date of hire is January 30th. So that's how I would know I'm missing these people in the current list. So I could just highlight and add them to the list. So now the current employee list matches um, the way that we're calculating. So, and then in, it could also be other things like transfers in or out. I know a lot of people want to skip the transfer part because you really, it feels like the total terminations is the main thing to getting that turnover percent right. But because we're calculating turnover based on terms divided by the headcount for that area, if I had three people transfer out of north, say, it's going to affect that turnover. So let me just, I'm just going to type over the formula just so you see, like right now it's 55%. But if we have three people transfer out, then it, the turnover is actually a lot higher because there's less of a head count there. But for transfers, you do have to enter the employee ID, the new um, the new area, and also their data hire if you want to include that information. So that's one other area I would troubleshoot if your numbers for beginning and ending headcount aren't lining up with the current employee list. You could also have a situation where you have extra people Maybe you accidentally pasted in uh, people that were terminated in December, or maybe you accidentally pasted in t people that are terminated in February. So their their effective date is entered ahead of time when you're pulling the January information. It pulls in February terms. That's going to throw off your numbers too if you're just wanting to see those the January turnover. I'll also link to the other two videos I have that go over a few different examples of how to use the template and that sort of thing. But I hope that helps with some of the questions that have been coming up with calculating your turnover. We also have um, some free resources, but if you wanna find that template that I just went over, you would just go to timesavingtemplates.com, the shop, button and then the human resources spreadsheets and I'll also link to it in the comments so you can find it but it's over turnover it's the second one that's appearing and then we also have some free resources if you would like to check that out first just go to timesavingtemplates.com slash free resources and for the human resources and compensation freebie we have a comp metrics cheat sheet and we also have some videos for getting started with Excel. If you are wanting to go back over the basics and a few other things for small business and rental property management. So thanks again for watching. And until next time, don't forget that I'm here to help you streamline and save time when it comes to using Excel spreadsheets. Thanks.